Hello everyone and welcome to another webinar organized by railfreight.com. The Rail Freight Summit 2022 highlights. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Tuesday, 13 September. My name is Nikos Papatolios and I will be your host for today from our studios in Rotterdam. It's been only a few days since the Rail Freight Summit Poland took place last week in Warsaw. And today, as the webinar's uh, title suggests, we will dive into the event's particulars and maybe some of its fun elements. Let me first introduce uh, today's webinar's participants. On the table next to me, I have my colleague Ari van Dijk. Hi, Griffin. Hello, Ari. And online, we have Vono de Jong from Ecoris and one of the co-moderators of the event. Hello, Vono. Hi. Good afternoon. And uh, Hello. Uh, Last but not least, it's George uh, Kresniki from Conway, who participated in the event. Welcome, George. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I did. I, I took my place in the Poland <laughs> Rail Freight. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, welcome, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Ari, I want to start with you. Yes. We had an anniversary event, a, a record-breaking event, right? So for sure, yeah. What did you get out of it? Yeah, well, it was the fifth edition. We always love to go to uh, to Poland, of course, because it's the central place in, in Europe. And mm -hmm. I remember very well the first time we went. It was in 2018. Uh, we had plans, but we did not have a, have a lot of uh, participants yet. We mm -hmm. started with 80. And uh, to see it grow through the years, and now we have well over 300 participants. Last mm -hmm. week in uh, Warsaw, that was really something. Mm -hmm. And it really shows, I think, uh, the development of logistics in, mm -hmm. uh, in rail freight, but also in Central Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like it. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot going on. Of mm -hmm. course, we know uh, the different topics, and we're going to talk about it a little bit today. But mm -hmm. I think it's good that rail freight uh, combines the, the industry and uh, let the leaders uh, come together and talk mm -hmm. about solutions mm -hmm. and getting rail freight move forward because i think that's the main goal of course mm -hmm. and this year the event took place in warsaw why yeah we uh, choose for warsaw uh, a couple of reasons we've been uh, to rochlov and gdansk and uh, a couple of other logistical hotspots but we said okay now we want to go to the capital because it's the fifth edition it's a mm -hmm. lustrum and all the industry leaders are situated there the big mm -hmm. offices and logistics service providers they have offices in warsaw so we really wanted to go there and the second reason was that there was a, a new uh, terminal uh, built by you, Hoopark, mm -hmm. one of our partners. And we had uh, the honor of the celebrational opening. It was really something. Big event, and people were quite excited, if I'm not mistaken, right? For sure, yeah. Because uh, for Hoopark, of course, which is situated for a large part, of course, in Switzerland, which mm -hmm. is where they are based, but in Italy and in the, in the Netherlands, in Germany, of course. For the first time, they are opening a terminal uh, in the eastern part of Europe, and mm -hmm. I really think that shows also the potential. There's so much going on there. There's so much energy, and mm -hmm. I think uh, in the past, it was always people thought, okay, Eastern Europe or Central Europe, right mm -hmm. now, by the, mm -hmm. behind the Iron Curtain, not so much going on. Well, I invite all of you, come to Poland, come to Warsaw, and see what's going on, because it's really impressive. Yes, because we already discussed that uh, EU investments might not target Poland so far, so much, uh, now at least, but uh, private investments are there, so this means something, right? Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of private investments. That's something also Hupak said. They did it all privately just to make the speed and to keep the comp competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. But for sure, I think there will be a lot of investments from Europe's side as well. Mm -hmm. Different kind of investments, because uh, ever since the tensions, of course, and the war started in, the, in Ukraine, mm -hmm. there is a shift. So also the TNT uh, network, we spoke a great deal about that. That is changing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the bottleneck in Malasovice are going to be a lot of investments. That's all shifting now mm -hmm. till the different corridors are more mm -hmm. vertical. Yet Poland remains an integral part of uh, Europe and the railway network and for logistics. For sure, that will grow, uh, I think, if you look at energy transition, mm -hmm. ambitions for sustainability, everybody's looking at rail, everybody's mm -hmm. looking at Central Europe, and that will grow for mm -hmm. sure. All right, uh, you were on stage, but also on the backstage, so... What vibe did you get from the, the event? What uh, feedback did you get from the people? Yeah, what I really love personally, and that's uh, what I'm saying as a publisher, of course, I've seen through the years a lot of familiar faces, but also every year a lot of new faces. And mm -hmm. it's really a community coming together, you know? Mm -hmm. Industry leaders leaving their business for a couple of days, coming together and talking about moving the, uh, yeah, the business uh, forward. Mm -hmm. Really French, uh, like, uh, a lot of people are acting like friends among mm -hmm. each other. 
also very uh, uh, yeah, French. Sometimes you play, you speak play very plainly to mm -hmm. each other, very mm -hmm. frank. I think we did that also, but it was a great atmosphere. We had a dinner, we had a party with the DJ, lots of conference uh, presentations, of course. But it was really combining business and pleasure, and I think that's uh, the way you build trust, you build relationships, and you build a real great business. I have to agree with you, and I think it's also a nice point to uh, add George to the discussion. George, you were there. Did you feel this community feeling that uh, Ari just described? And is this one of the reasons that companies like Conway, for instance, uh, are willing to participate in such events? Oh, yeah, 100% totally. I truly agree with Ari because the vibe was amazing. Uh, some of us came like to meet our friends and also to meet new people. And of course, the more people are attending, the more you see how the business is growing. You see, mm -hmm. not only a container where I am, where our company stands, but also the rail, the everything. And I 100% agree with Fari that uh, Poland is uh, also main one of the main parts of the logistics and containers and everything. And uh, when you go, you feel it mm -hmm. and you get more contacts and involved in this business. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Did you meet this year people that you haven't met before? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, half of my new contacts are the new people with whom I'm already in contact and we're already discussing the new business opportunities from Polish market. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Uh, if you could define some of your highlights from the event, what would they be? Uh, it can be content-wise, uh, networking-wise. I would say, uh, then, uh, as Ari mentioned, he's uh, also the front stage and the backstage guy. I'm the backstage guy. I was uh, always uh, on backstage working and networking with people and speaking with them. So basically networking was the main event for me, to be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand. And something that uh, stuck to your mind, something that you learned, maybe. Something that, yeah, the more people you meet, the more business is growing. <laughs> indeed. 100%. Indeed. Because uh, I would say that in our business, the more people you know, the more opportunities you can get. And rail freight gives it opportunities to you. Okay. Ari? Do you agree with nice. that? Yeah, nice, I totally right? agree. Real trade <laughs> gives opportunity. And I think, uh, especially if you're talking cross-border, you know, because we had such, so much different nationalities uh, participating, there's also a big cultural aspect, mm -hmm. you know, and I think uh, it's really important to invest in that. And uh, great to see companies like Conway uh, investing in it, building trust, building relationships, and uh, building their business with it. I think. I mean, and also, so. interesting, apart from the cultural differences, to see different segments of the business, I think. For sure, Container yeah. business, uh, uh, forwarders, uh, carriers, all together trying to find common solutions. I think that's the, 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 the largest... I totally agree, Nico, because everybody has like a business, everybody has something to sell. Well, it sounds a bit uh, commercially, but everybody is really in it, and everybody can do business with one another. And that mm -hmm. makes what makes it so interesting to connect to each and every one participating mm -hmm. on, the, on the summit. Right, right, right. Uh, ono, are you here with us? Yeah, I'm here with you. Great. Uh, how, what would be one of your highlights from the event? I, I think what I found the most uh, interesting, I, I mean, we all had good presentations. That was one thing for sure, that they were all high level. Mm -hmm. But the most intriguing stories, of course, uh, the stories from the Ukraine, how you had to reinvent your logistics network as a, out of this terrible war. And, and then the good thing, to see how other companies were willing to help and to step in to, to make sure that these export flows will uh, will continue to flow, and that was the, that, that I found maybe also from a professional perspective the most mm -hmm. uh, the most interesting, and 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 as has been put forward, I mean for me as a host it's just about making sure that everyone is having an interesting time, but the connection everyone is making that's that's maybe the most important thing, yes. and and when I heard one Dutch company saying. Each year here, I get concrete business leads. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing it for. That it's not that you every time meet the same people, no, new people and new leads. And so, yeah, I think we can look all look back at a very attractive, uh, attractive conference. Yes, because I think that the conference program uh, mainly aims to to actually pinpoint some uh, burning issues of the industry and uh, try to possibly find some solutions. But uh, the most important is, as you mentioned, that uh, people actually get the business leads. And I think uh, that's uh, incomparable. Uh, George, I'm going to get uh, back to you with one last uh, question. Yes, uh, we mentioned the positive things. Did you miss anything that you would like to see next time, maybe? Mm, more people. <laughs> more people. <laughs> I think the more the better, to be honest. No, because uh, uh, as I said before, and I will say it again, 
uh, we have to always cooperate with each other because we never know what will happen in our world now we don't know so basically we have to, we have to help each other to grow mm -hmm. and that's why these events are for what it is my opinion personally yes. <laughs> All right, thank you, George. Uh, thank you for your input, and uh, I'm really willing to see you in one of our uh, next events. Definitely. Thank you, guys. Thank Have you. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Now, I think that a very nice wrap-up for this discussion would be the after movie of the event. For that sure. We have, let's, uh, uh, let's look at the movie. Exactly. We saw some very nice images. Unfolding yeah, it really there, brings right? me back. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Go back. I wasn't there, unfortunately, because I had to work on the back end. But I could fe really feel the energy of the people, uh, the eagerness to 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 discuss and find solutions, uh, even f uh, by watching it online. So I guess for you, it was more intense. For sure, it was very uh, intense. It's very nice to meet and also to learn about the industry. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, for instance, when we had the opening of the terminal, there was also the new newest locomotive of uh, Siemens. They gave a really interesting presentation about that, but also every time I see such a such a machine, you know, you think, okay, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You think, but we got a tour inside the locomotive. I could sit on the on the chair on our, uh, as well, and we could really like uh, uh, get a, a clear in. Uh, explanation of what's going on inside a locomotive. How everything really, works. Yeah, I learned a lot. And that makes sense why some people are getting crazy for locomotives, right? Yeah. Uh, train spotters, etc. It's like I a totally sport, a whole new sport. I totally uh, agree. I think we could uh, watch a video where we can show the uh, Siemens locomotive and uh, explain what you're talking about. Let's see. X-Load ist ein neues Ausrüstungspaket, ein Zusatzfeature, mit dem man bereits ausgelieferte Lokomotiven nachrüsten kann. Ebenso kann man damit auch neue Lokomotiven ausrüsten. Mit X-Load ist man jetzt in der Lage, mit einer vierachsigen Lokomotive sehr zuverlässig recht hohe Tonnagen im Vergleich zu vorher zu befördern. Also wir, die SBB Cargo International, sind ein Traktionär. Wir fahren Züge. Und die im Wesentlichen auf der Nord-Süd-Achse von Rotterdam bis in den Raum Mailand über die Schweiz, über beide Achsen, Domodossola oder Gotthard. x ist für unser Geschäft wichtig, weil wir dadurch unseren Kunden natürlich viel bessere Angebote machen können. Wir können die Züge schwerer und auch länger machen. Heute Abend wollen wir der SBB Cargo International vorführen, wie unser x lot system funktioniert. Der Bötzberg zeichnet sich dadurch aus, dass er eine 12 Promille Steigung auf 15 Kilometer Länge hat, was eine extreme Herausforderung für eine vierachsige Lokomotive ist. Gestern Nacht lief super gut. Wir waren alle ziemlich äh, aufgeregt und gespannt, wie es funktionieren wird. Wir hatten einen 2000 Tonnen Zug, den Bötzberg hochgezogen und haben es sogar zusätzlich geschafft, nochmal stehen zu bleiben und wieder anzufahren. Das Zusatzfeature X-Load ermöglicht Betriebseinsätze, die zukünftig mit einer vierachsigen Lokomotive auf der Nord-Süd-Achse äh, bewältigt werden können. Wir stehen hier im Bahnhof äh, Frutigen und wir sind hier, um mit unserem neuen System X-Load Zugkraftversuche zu machen. Es geht letztendlich darum nachzuweisen, dass das System X-Load seine volle Leistungsfähigkeit beweisen kann.
Wir hatten heute eine Anhängelast von 1020 Tonnen und wir haben es heute geschafft, bewässert in der Blauseekurve am Kanderviadukt und in der Einfahrt Kandersteg anzufahren. Aus eigener Kraft und nach der Blauseekurve auch auf Streckengeschwindigkeit zu beschleunigen. Und das war wirklich, das war wirklich Wahnsinn. <lacht> das ist so, das war einfach völliger Wahnsinn. Ich denke schon, dass das heute ein Stück Eisenbahngeschichte war, die wir da gemeinsam mit der BLS Cargo geschrieben haben. Die Vectron Lock ist ein europäisches Produkt. Sie ist wie mehr international tätig. Sie transportiert mit uns zusammen Güter durch ganz Europa, über die Alpen. Und das ist relativ unabhängig davon, wo sie in Europa gerade unterwegs ist. Der Vectron ist schon so ziemlich die ideale Güterlok. Die ist äh, von der Auslegung her sehr flexibel. Man kann äh, Pakete nachkaufen, Länderkonfigurationen nachrüsten. Die Zulassungsverfahren sind standardisiert, die Software ist standardisiert. Man kann damit extrem viel machen und das ist eigentlich sehr nützlich. Also bei den Kunden, wo wir bis jetzt x vorgeführt haben, die waren alle begeistert und konnten es kaum glauben, was überhaupt mit diesem System möglich ist. Man hat wirklich das Unmögliche möglich gemacht. Right, we're back on air. Ari, would you like to add something? Yeah, no, it's just what I want to say is that it was a quite technical video, I think, for a lot of people in the real freight business. But if you see the passion in the people and the engineers working so hard, because it's a really impressive project. In the past, they had to use two locomotives, and they can now use one. Yeah. We show all the ins and outs of the of this new machine, and uh, yeah, I really like it. Uh, and we shouldn't yeah. forget that uh, it's not only about the railway network, the railway tracks, or like the logistic solutions and uh, uh, alliances, or like uh, uh, working together of the industry. It's also about rolling stock and equipment. Without technology, we cannot uh, realize much of the plans that we have in mind. For sure, and there was a presentation from DB, uh, and they're really uh, working on the rolling stock, especially uh, the wagons. And there's a lot of replacements going on in the upcoming decade. I think like like in the order, like 30,000 uh, wagons need mm -hmm. to be replaced. So there's a lot going on there. Uh, yeah. Eight. Lots of money in the technology for sector, sure, yeah, yeah. both for maintenance, because all the equipment needs to ad adapt in uh, new conditions and new equipment to move forward. Yeah, also getting more effective. Exactly, exactly. So I think it's a good time to move towards analyzing a bit what we learned during the event. And on, I'm going to get uh, back mm -hmm. to you. Uh, I think that you're a very curious person by nature and we could see it on stage as well. Now, some of the highlights or main takeaways uh, I personally got from the event were, were like uh, the intermodal challenges uh, mm. in a panel discussion, the urgency for short-term and mid-term uh, solutions for Ukraine, and also the energy crisis and uh, the future of uh, the European uh, railway network. What were your main takeaways? And maybe we can have a discussion, uh, including mine and Aris as well. Well, I, I think that the, the, to the, the topics you relate to very familiar uh, it was interesting to see how they work out in each different country that indeed higher energy prices they're a problem for everyone but how they work out can uh, can differ and so for instance the discussion we had that on some networks now energy trains get prioritized over uh, intermodal trains uh, and for some countries, you can understand that more and than 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 for others um and i think what you the main thing that 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 that, that uh, in this in this conference was that in the past we always focused on this east to west traffic because indeed Silk Road was very important. But now, given that volumes have dropped a little mm -hmm. for some relations more than for uh, than for others, you now see that the north south connection has become much more important again, also in the light of what is happening in the uh, in 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 the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, and also maybe what I found an interesting note is that infrastructure is always a topic for debate. And also how is the infrastructure manager performing? But I don't know how, how you heard it, but we heard, of course, some complaints, mm -hmm. but also luckily some compliments. I think it was Michael Stalhut who said 10 years ago, it wouldn't have been possible to take a different route if there's a blockage on, on a road, mm -hmm. on a route. But now 10 years later, last year, they used 
20 different routes to come, I think, from Rotterdam to Italy. Mm -hmm. So that was, I think, also a positive message after all these complaints. But 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 given, Nikos, that you have been listening very well from Rotterdam, I don't know if you've heard the same, but that was something that struck me. I noticed uh, what uh, Michael Stalhut mentioned. However, I think this really depends on uh, us, uh, like the energy prices, etc., in uh, each state uh, individually. Of course, in some corridors, like uh, the Rhine Alpine corridor, you need some kind of synergy. And it's very positive to see companies like Hupac assessing the situation as positive now because until last uh, year, last spring, there were like immense problems on the corridor. This year, some alternatives work. And uh, I think this is due to the closest cooperation of uh, French, German, Dutch and uh, Swiss uh, infrastructure managers, which is very good. However, in other uh, occasions like Poland, for instance, and there were some hints there that the, the, PK, that the infrastructure manager of Poland should be in the conference, even though it, uh, they weren't, uh, they're not the same. They have some problems. And uh, so I, I, I think, in my perspective, it's time for infrastructure managers to start operating as a shared European network, co-operating the network instead of individually. Uh, I don't know if you agree with that. I don't know, Ari, what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I think uh, I'm not a real uh, freight expert, but I think in general uh, you can see that they're moving forward. Like you said, there are examples. Anna said it. It's getting uh, The vibe is getting more positive also uh, among participants. But uh, I totally agree that uh, there was a lot of tension for the Silk Road, and uh, we got just now a question in the mm -hmm. uh, a chat as well, so perhaps you can get to that a little later. Mm -hmm. But uh, the North-South, especially also the Baltic states, mm -hmm. there's a lot of development going on, and uh, yeah, I really applaud that and uh, yes. look forward. Yet, oh no, there were some mm -hmm. uh, problems from uh, the shipper side, because we had the panel discussion and the, 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 uh, the, the participant who were who was uh, representing the shipping uh, yeah. industry, had some complaints about it, her model. Yeah, that, that's always a debate, and it's interesting to see, because after, afterwards we had the networking dinner, and on the way there, it's one of, it was one of the topics to discuss. Are we expecting too much from intermodal transport, especially if you compare it to, to deep sea that also has issues with on-time reliability? Uh, and then who is to blame? And, and then I think the, the, the main message was, that the shipper just wants to be informed, that it's mm -hmm. often the, 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 the information problems that, that, that cause uh, the complaints and, and not so much if you, as a railway undertaking or as an intermodal transport operator, that you offer a solution. And that, that was, I think, interesting in the discussion that the shipper said, if you let me know by what day I can expect it, or at least let me know what is your solution, then already the discussion would be better and you wouldn't be fighting just over um, KPIs and, and on-time performance. Mm -hmm. So it was, mm -hmm. I, I liked that panel debate. It was a good one. Indeed, indeed, it was a good one. And uh, I underlined what uh, Halina Bajuk from uh, PKP Intermodal mentioned, that uh, it's practically impossible to have the, the, the same kind of communication that the tracking company has, because yeah. there is an involvement of many different companies. And she uh, raised the topic of, should intermodal companies start thinking more like Hupac, for instance? Should intermodal companies integrate other modes of transport in their operations and not expect uh, cooperation with other companies. What do you think about that? Could this be the future of an intermodal company undertaking road transport, the rail transport, and uh, maybe short sea connections? Yeah, it, it it has been what we've been in the Netherlands been studying now for decades. It's the, it's the whole synchromodal transport concept that indeed the transport or the logistics operator by himself can decide what is at that moment the best transport mode for for a specific need of a client. Mm -hmm. It would be good, but it does indeed require this constant stream of information. And yes, you can call the truck driver, hey, where, where's your truck? Or speed up a little. And, 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 and of course, a railway network is much more complex, more, more actors involved, um, more regulations. I mean, mm -hmm. each conference, it's, 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 it's of course, it's, it's striking to see that, that an 1830s technology mm -hmm. still has to do with regulations of over 100 years old. And that's, that's something from a European perspective that should be uh, should be fixed if you want to truly compete with road transport mm -hmm. and yes we have all these ambitions fit for 55 uh, in the long run most uh, traffic over 300 kilometers should be done either by inland waterways or short sea or rail mm -hmm. and then there's a, a whole world still to win mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and one of the things that struck me is that, uh, okay, we all see the growth of real freight. Everybody wants uh, to be on the modality. It's hip, it's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, it will grow, but are we ready to grow? Because a lot of people said, okay, well, the most of the infrastructure in real is like, like, like 50, 60 years old. Is it ready for the growth of the future, or are we just on the, the evening before massive investments, massive infrastructure projects mm -hmm. with all kinds of different problems? I'm wondering what your opinion is on that, Anna. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> most of indeed, indeed now that, that, that if, if it's 50 or 60 years old, it means it's obsolete and it needs replacements. And now see what is happening, for instance, in Germany with ever continuing works on the, on the railways. My reaction is then always, well, take a look at the roads and you have exactly the same problem. But it, it is a bit also that we had the session uh, on what is proper investment that, that of course, in, in, in Poland, there were there are worries that that most that some investment is only geared towards new infrastructure instead of renewing what you already already have. And that, that's mm -hmm. always a debate, because at least it. What you need to make sure is that the moment you're working on this infrastructure, that you can provide the client, which is then the railway undertaking, with an alternative. That it makes no sense if you close down a railway for years, because by then the client of the client, the trans, the, the, the the shipper, will probably have shifted to an alternative. So it's already too uh, late by then. Hmm? It's already too late by then. By then it's too late. So hopefully, with with some careful planning, you can maybe maybe uh, make sure that the problems won't happen and this once again stresses the need to have this dialogue also with the infrastructure managers so for the sixth edition i really hope that they can make it to also have the infrastructure manager there because i think there are a lot of yeah, a lot of uh discussions that already and that, that doesn't mean that you attack each other but it's it, it it comes with some common understanding of how everyone is involved in the race and 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 that exchange i would love to it's to moderate that next year if we can make that happen. Yes, indeed. Uh, now let's turn our uh, discussion focus a bit on Ukraine because yeah. there is a crisis, there is a war, of course, everybody acknowledges that. Uh, and it affects rail in two ways. First, in terms of uh, the European network, revisions of TNT corridors, etc. And of course, the Silk Road traffic. And I think we have a relevant questions from... Yeah, we've got a couple uh, of questions regarding the Silk Road, and it was also a big topic during the, the conference, and I, I know we already uh, we also spoke a lot with the audience uh, there, so I hope Ono knows it again, because Greg Nahler uh, asks here in the chat, uh, was there any view on how long the Northern Corridor will suffer from weak volume uh, with no sign of the war ending? And are uh, European shippers and forwarders prepared to put their political... Convictions aside and real uh, through Russia. What do oh, you think about that, Ona? Oh no, what do you think? Because so we had some talk with shippers, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Some who said yeah, it, it, it was the main question. I think also Marie and I had before the conference. Can we actually get some feeling which shippers are back, who are still not on the line? And my personal observations were that are are that the main. The well-known names still are not back on the northern route. Some might be, but the, and of course, no one was willing to discussing names. But indeed, what we saw in the beginning was that the 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 the, the space that was but before occupied by the really large shippers is now in the LCL business for smaller uh, smaller shippers. So they now get uh, they can now make use of the real product, but but still the big ones are not 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 back. And indeed. No one knows when it will be over. And also no one was really discussing what we will see the moment the guns are silent. And that was something I had expected, that there would already be some ideas about the contingency uh, when the war stops. But that's something that I think no one has a true, has a true clue. Uh, I, I heard a lot of people say, uh, people anticipate on a, on a sort of frozen conflict. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, that, that because the Silk Road, of course, has grown tremendously over the last decade. And, uh, of course, a couple of percentage uh, has, has decreased now, but still the main Silk Road is still open for business. So Indeed. that's very yeah. difficult for a lot of companies and also a lot of shippers uh, who are yeah really uh, wrestling with that. You know? It's a legal and uh, insurance matter, basically, of course. Yeah, and it's also an ethical. Eh? It's mainly ethical because, yes, you can make use of the route. It's, it's, it's not bound to sanctions. I mean, for most cargo, I mean, you have to be aware of dual-use goods. You, you, you can make use of the route, but it, it is indeed just as also, I think, Maersk stated from the beginning, we're divesting 
from Russia. We don't we, we don't want to operate on the northern route. And for shippers, it's also it's it's their it's their own choice. And some have publicly said, no, we're not using it anymore. Uh, others, it's it's not clear. Mm -hmm. But we see we see flows in both directions going, but at a lesser pace than before. Interesting discussion. Hey, oh no, there's also uh, somebody in the chat, Yet Jong, and he's he's asking, uh, what does inflation do with this discussion? Uh, has that also effect on the on the demand from uh, Asia to uh, Europe? Yeah, uh, I can't look into your wallet, uh, Ari, but I got my new electricity bill, and yes, it means that that, that probably <laughs> you need to, you, you you know. It will mean that consumption will go down. Maybe the strange thing is no economist can by now explain why, for instance, the Netherlands ex consumer expenditure is still so high because by now savings should have been should, should have been gone. Now that that, that definitely will influence uh, demand, but then the same applies also to ocean and air. I mean, if if consumer demand is dropping in in, in Europe, it will affect all modalities. Exactly. Yeah, we met with some shippers as well, and they also said that the the extreme prices in the in ocean and deep sea freight, and uh, yeah. uh, the continuous in, in uh, accountability of, and also the you know the the, the problems with the delays mm -hmm. and the and the surcharges that also is a push for real you know so of course. It's balanced of course of course all right oh no any uh, additional remarks from uh, the event no I'm, I'm I'm still recovering a bit because indeed it was a it was a very energetic uh, energetic event and also uh, it, it wasn't finished the moment the conference program finished mm -hmm. but uh, now I, I look back at very and, and I hope with me most participants at a very very good conference I'm pretty sure about that uh, and we make sure that the next one is going to be even more interesting uh, and with some uh, pressing questions as you, as soft to talk before. about soft I think to talk about uh, yeah, always for sure, yeah. talk uh, about on the stage, of course, and over a drink maybe later. Yeah. Uh, ono, thank you very much for being here today. And I must also mention that you did a great job as a co-moderator of the event. Uh, thank so you. We'll see you around. Have a nice day. Uh, apart from Rail Freight Summit, though, yeah. we wrapped it up more or less. We can talk for hours, of course. For sure, yeah. For and hours. I love to talk about these yeah, topics because yeah. it's so interesting. And we will talk uh, more about it because uh, next month uh, is our Real Freight on Tour. So that's the smaller event, but uh, also really Real Freight related. And uh, we're going to Hungary. Mm -hmm. So that will take place uh, on the 19th and 20th of October mm -hmm. next month. Mm -hmm. And we're going to visit also uh, a terminal which is just built uh, there. And we're going to learn a lot about uh, what's going on with your... Hungarian, uh, a very promising right. terminal in a very promising country because Hungary is in the middle. Uh, it could acquire some kind of uh, gateway role. Uh, yeah, for sure. But all Central Europe is growing enormously, mm -hmm. and uh, they've got a lot of ground to gain and uh, ambitions, mm -hmm. of course. So uh, we very look, much look forward to go there, and we invite you all to. Uh, to join us mm -hmm. and after that we have another event in yeah December, and then right? the, the final event of this year is the of course the silk road summit on which it all uh, started and that will take place in the home of the silk road this time we're going to duisburg and uh, to be honest i could not be more proud that also uh, with this edition we're going to the hotspot where the silk road really uh, uh, kicked off for a large part. There's so much traffic uh, uh, going there. Indeed. And I'm very keen to learn uh, how the infrastructure is organized, uh, uh, what shippers are there, and uh, look forward to meeting uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, Silk Road experts. And it's also some kind of an anniversary uh, event as well, not for us, but for the Silk Road itself. So we're going to take a look in the past decade of Silk Road developments and what the future holds uh, in the decade to come, or at least in the shorter term. At least we will try. Exactly. I right. look forward to that one. All right. Uh, Ari, thank you very much for being here today. For sure. It was a pleasure to talk with you as well. Now, everybody, this was the, the uh, Rail Freight Summit 22 highlights webinar thank you all for watching you will also be able to rewatch the webinar online on youtube later today uh, if you missed anything thank you for being here and make sure that you will be in one of our upcoming events to meet personally have a nice day